Okay, hi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone that's here today to join us here on our webinar. And I'm glad to invite everybody here and glad to see everyone that's here from around the world that's joining us today in this webinar. So today we have a special webinar today you know, for Synchro webinar, which is about monitoring delays, resources, and financial risk management management using Synchro 4D. So in this webinar, we are glad to invite uh, some special guests with us here today, our guest speaker, speaker Sandeep Chinabaya. So just a bit of a background about him. So you know, Sandeep is a working as a planning manager in Penta Ocean Construction Limited in Singapore, one of the large construction firms here in Singapore. And he has a multitude of experience uh, in working in project controls, project management, digital learning, and he's worked in around the world in countries such as India, Malaysia, Singapore, as well as Australia. And of course, we are glad to have him here today to actually share his experience with us about his, what he has done with Synchro 40 in his projects and to share some insights that you might find valuable to you as well as you adopt Synchro in your project. And for those that are you know, new to Synchro, um, welcome. You know, I'm glad to uh, they invite you guys here as well to learn more about this. And together with uh, Sandeep, we actually have uh, a bunch of uh, panelists here today with us. Uh, I'm glad to invite them here as well to answer your questions or to share and talk about topics that are interesting right now in the planning world, you know, in the 4D beam world, and to really share and understand, help you guys understand the challenges that we all face in this industry. So my Sarah, we have here, he's from Australia. He's based in Australia, working for Landleach. He's a digital engineering manager with extensive hands-on hands -on experience working in digital engineering and construction management, both just in, not just in Australia, but overseas for multi discipline projects from pre-investment to handover and operations and management stage. On top of that, we have together here with us, Anik Mao and Tatagata, who are our product success managers here in uh, Bentley Virtual City, where they are actually work with closely with our customers to help them ensure that they adopt Synchro and actually uh, optimize the way that they actually employ Synchro for their project and adopt them properly. And last but not least, myself, my name is Frankie. I'm the product sales engineer here at uh, Bentley Systems and in Virtual City, and I'm glad to invite you guys here for this webinar. And you know, if you have any questions or anything, we will leave it to the end of this uh, webinar. And, and without further ado, let me invite uh, Sandeep, who will be sharing, uh, who will be sharing this with you guys. Oh, can you see the screen? Yes, Sandeep, we can see your screen. Yeah, we can. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice having you guys here. Uh, let me go through the content. Uh, it's a very exciting topic that if 40 minutes for all, it's like in uh, visual until now. So there's much more we can do in 40. Uh, the content list is uh, presented here. It shows what is the overview of 40 planning and the capabilities of Synchro and delay analysis using 4D program, then financial risk, identification of financial risk, and how to manage those uh, financial risk with the help of visual earned value analysis and resources planning, optimizing those resources timely and deploying those resources. I'll speak all these things in this webinar. And uh, finally, our uh, role of 4D program in achieving net zero goals. And after that, there's a panel discussion with all the panelists introduced by Frankie. Okay, projects for you. So 4D can be used to multiple types of projects, uh, such as mass transit project, offshore projects, building projects, and tunnels, station. You name it, you can use you can use 4D program for any of those kind of projects. Uh, so uh, you you are saying the very good visuals here. Uh, what we are going to discuss, what I'm going to convey is there is much more things we can do like uh, unvalue analysis and monitoring delays using 4D program. Coming to the utilization, uh, we can identify safety risks, whether the uh, working environment is safe to work or deploy the machineries. We can do the safety risk assessment. Also, we can do the comparison with baseline and actual uh, comparison of uh, uh, 3D models with uh, in line with uh, program 4D program, we can do this comparative analysis with multiple windows, baseline windows, actual windows, and uh, 
projection windows. Coming to the risk, the risk occur in different ways like uh, unforeseen ground conditions, unforeseen space constraint. So there are different types of risk which we can model it and we can identify those risks and we can mitigate in the early stages of the program development, which is totally not available in 2D, pro, 2D program by 2D schedules in, in the current uh, market. So what is um, further we can do is visual and value analysis. You can see the nice graph on uh, we can see both comparative windows. Then missionary resource planning, the movement of missionaries on site, whether the space is available or the constraint has been mitigated. So we can plan all these things in 4D program and we can visually inspect it, visually mitigate them and do the catch up measures. So when do we start implementing the 4D process in a project life cycle? We can start uh, in the design stages like uh, preparation of methodology using 4D program to avoid non-constructive uh, methodologies and we can in the process of pre-construction we can develop the program and baselining we can plan the procurement like for dfma manufactured modulars we can do the procurement planning and in the construction phases we can do the progress monitoring reporting monitor delays visually monitor delays usually manage the resources and plan the materials also. And uh, uh, due to the readily available uh, availability of models, we can do the quantity takeoff instantly. Also the cost loaded program will give you earned value analysis, earned value graph. So you can do the risk assessment of the cost length also you can carry out. After post completion, you can use it as a as built model, as built program, and you can do the maintenance schedules as well in the entire project life cycle it can contribute 80 percent of your job the workflow is quite simple we will take schedules from existing planning tools like v6 projects saffron project or any kind of uh, uh, and we can integrate this into the synchro at the same time 3d models from revit ifc uh, we will integrate with the synchro and we will generate a 4d program by doing the manual or auto matching linkage this is the workflow we can do a 4D program. After we input the cost, it will become the 5D program. So uh, this uh, general approach to the development of 4D program. And when we have uh, multiple people working like uh, consultants and all, we can uh, avoid loading the cost into the program. So we can uh, just load the schedule and models do the synchro 4D program. Then the cost information can be synchronized from uh, external data, we'll uh, re-import the V6 file loaded with cost, and we we'll just select import cost, then we can integrate the cost into the same file, and it can be 4D program. Similarly, this program can be exported without cost uh, for uh, monitoring or revising the program. So this uh, process is like, it, 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 it allows flexibilities to everyone, uh, every stakeholders working on the project and program. Delay representation. A visual delay such as site axis, site obstructions, and additional works and blockage. So unforeseen site or ground condition and mobilization of machineries. All these things can be modeled and presented. Uh, as you can see, the site axis has been revoked, so people are not able to mobilize the machineries. And there is a drainage door going on at the axis, so it's uh, obstructed. And there is uh, additional work like building to be constructed additional scope of work can be modeled and presented similarly delayed materials uh, which is uh, which is slowing down the progress of steel structure construction and unforeseen ground condition so we can model any kind of obstructions site uh, site access uh, has not been granted so we can model any kind of ground conditions like if you find anything unforeseen like cables utilities and any like uh, say world war era bomb has been found on site so the work has been stopped so this all these kind of things can be modeled and simulated over a period of time to see the impact uh, duration uh, and we can do the delay analysis using those impact uh, impacted schedule we, uh, as as we can model everything so it's quite effective compared to the 2d delay analysis which is we doing prospective and retrospective analysis 
in the current market. So as mentioned, we can present the plant condition as well as impacted condition. Uh, we can see what was plant condition, what is impacted condition, and similarly, what is plant original scope and what is additional scope. We can classify these delays and we can categorize these delays which for, uh, for which uh, who is responsible for which the event. So we can categorize all these delays and make a good representation of our analysis uh, and contest our claims effectively. Let me take you to the simulation. In this case or scenario, a delay event one such as material supply delay for a steel structure area two and area three, where you can notice the area two and area three uh, has not been delivered on time. So there is this delay event has been incorporated here, but I have not generated the schedule. If I generate the schedule, this all activities will be after this uh, structure framing area one, uh, but I'm using the this is the blue line is the schedule date i'm using the focus time and moving and noticing what's to be done uh, during the end of uh, or mid of june what is the activity to be done you know during the mid of june i was supposed to do these areas of areas work such as steel structure erection uh, but and due to this delay metal supply delay it will be pushed further uh, like um, june uh, mid of june to start the work so this this is how we can uh, present our delay so you can see that window activated is actual window and late window so the baseline late dates and actual window has been activated to showcase so we can actually see what is the forthcoming activities and whether we can meet this um, because of existing delays or not so going to the actual delay simulation uh, after scheduling this is case one where the metal supply delay has been studied under the case two, under the case two, you could notice that the program uh, is the baseline program is this one with the these bars. Whereas after affected by this event, uh, I'll speak more details about this event. The entire program has been uh, scheduled to further, so it has been impacted. Baseline is this window, and uh, impacted bars are these. So when I do the simulated simulation of the impact, you can notice the changes due to the late mobilization of tower crane. The structure has not been completed. So the structure, uh, the crane has been placed here in the baseline window and the works have been carried out, whereas here it is delayed. So you can notice the floors from one to seven has been erected, but here it has not been done so. So to discuss in detail about these implications and how I, how we can do the assess, delay assessment, coming to the next window, where I have the um, delay event details, duration, and the actual start and finish and projected finish dates and baseline early and baseline late, um, baseline early start, early finish. I can place late start, late finish as well. But you can notice in uh, 4D, single 4D, we have uh, three types of float. One is downstream float, baseline float, and various in both of this float. In P6 or MS project, you will only notice uh, total float and free float. What has happened here in this case is, as the delay has occurred, due to the delay duration of 54 days, the delay variance is 53 days, but we had a baseline float of 22 days. That means after the ellipse of the baseline float positive, the net impact is minus 31 days. So I need not to go to P6 to have a base program or a pre-impact uh, pre program. I can get the impacted flow in one window in one schedule along with visual representations of baseline condition and impact condition. This is the um, most advanced uh, methodology. I mean, this is the most advanced way of presenting our delays and contesting our claims. Here in this scenario, I am discussing about only one event. So multiple events can be incorporated to the entire life cycle of the project. Suppose delay event two, 
then in that case i'll convert this to do the impact assessment i'll convert this as a baseline b then i'll activate baseline b with zero float here then the impacted float can be because of second delay event impacted float can be noticed here then this can be recorded and contested for the claim so this this makes delay analysis quite easy effective more communicative and visually uh, representative compared to the 2d claim analysis we can activate uh, three windows one is baseline actual and projected or recovery uh, this is a uh, prospective delay analysis so when i want to uh, carry out i mean retrospective analysis i can make this as as built schedule then i can eliminate this activity and i can see the changes in the uh, collapsed as built so i can do the retrospective analysis prospective analysis and i can see the flow changes and i can get the impacted duration at one screen so even in our claim contesting we, we are allowed to present visual impact and we can present animated impact in this case i'm just showing the tower crane delayed but we can also provide the road access been obstructed underground as underground works has been uh, 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 i mean interface activity has been impacted so we can show multiple events and present it very clearly and concisely so this is the added advantage compared to the t6 and microsoft project or any other 2d schedule tool and uh, since many people like lawyers and legal professionals uh, and uh, claims uh, claim consultants and arbitrators involve and make a decision for them this kind of thing is like time saving and it will like uh, enable faster decision making faster analysis this kind of visual representation also make uh, uh, lesser claims like it will prevent more claims because you are in the pre-construction stage itself you are analyzing most of the risk space constraint uh, identifying the risk and how to mitigate the risk all these things you are modeling in the pre-construction stage so it's a win-win situation for all the parties involved in the delay analysis so moving forward for the next topic that's on value analysis how to mitigate financial risk and control the financial risk in the project in a dynamic environment where every day each and each and uh, every activity is ongoing outside which has certain amount of risk in it so coming to the basic concept overview we have a uh, two curves one is planned value earned value cost actual cost we know the basic definition cost variance earned value minus actual cost if it is cost variance is more then we are earning at above the actual cost so it's a, a positive cash flow schedule variance is earned value minus planned value so if, in case if the schedule schedule variance is positive then it is doing well so uh, we are expected to have equal like schedule variance zero so it's uh, on time so various at completion definitions are here coming to the scenarios which we are expected to have we all want to be in the first scenario where we are ahead of time and earnings where the earned value is more compared to the planned value and cost actual cost so we are in the profit as well as we are faster in doing our works uh, we want this condition to be in place for every project that's everybody's dream but in another scenario we have we are hired of uh, time but the actual cost is exceeding the planned as well as earned value so it losing money so this kind of scenario is like um, more budget scenario so it requests the cost mitigation measures cost control measures under profit and but the hired of time time taken is uh, sorry uh, we are under profit but time taken is more that means uh, time is consumed a lot so we are behind schedule so need to catch up need to catch up means we need to have um, uh, expediting uh, schedules here recovery schedules to meet the target uh, completion date this case is worst case where both behind time and behind cost nobody wants to be in this place coming to the de-risking uh, methodology using 4d program as an organizational uh, team you will have multiple portfolio of projects project one project two project three and you have to control all these projects cash flow on a quarterly basis and we use a 4d program because it will have a 
visual description of what is going on on site visual uh, display of what is going on on site what is being planned over a period of time what is being achieved so suppose if i move this curve to end of july the focus time i can see what is the activity to be done here so any person in the project stream uh, can understand that okay this activity is planned for july so what i need to mobilize which resources i need to mobilize so it could take actions based on it whereas in 2d we are just seeing the graph on schedule but we are not sure of what is going to be done on site only those experienced construct construction managers can visualize what is going to be done on site but the cost managers project control managers will have difficulty in knowing what is going to done going to be done similarly at organizational level so it is like many projects on board so many people don't have the, the flexibility to know which is the forthcoming activity activities in this case you could see that the planned value we have 1 million and earn value is 9.9 .9 million actual cost is 0.6 so we are on profit earn value is more than the actual cost so you can see the variance it is even stating we are at more 274k is more so this is uh, this is conveying that the project is doing well and schedule performance index is 0.9 so it, it will also convey that we need to meet the planned value at the same time and if you implement all this kind of uh, visual description on value graph and uh, activities uh, in the window you could control and de-risk uh, what is uh, for entire project cycles for example you can see the visual demonstration here you can have schedule and value projection and what is to be done in the baseline or planned value what is going on going at the uh, actual scenario now you can notice that you need to do the pile cap and uh, uh, perimeter drain works so you can mobilize the perimeter drain and pile cap team to the site similarly you can mobilize for september you can mobilize steel structure team so you are on track in meeting what is required it will enable you to meet the planned value and it will also allow you to stay profitable in very competitive construction industry where uh, it's very hard to make profit and it's like a hard goal to everyone <clears throat> so the, we have a we'll do the quarterly requirement of financials then we'll have month one month to suppose for say uh, jan march uh, jan feb march so we what is the planned value what is the forecast what is the potential risk uh, in 4d environment you can notice the potential risk you can make list of the potential risk such as missionary requirement material supply delays and how to mitigate those potential risks you can make a list of potential risks and for foreseeable potential risk and you can implement the actions or you can communicate the this risk to the other site team to expedite on those uh, risk to meet the earned value forecast. So this is a way of de-risking and staying uh, with the positive cash flow in the construction sector. Without this kind of cost control measures and foreseeable uh, earnings, it's like blindly doing the project without a proper foresight. Suppose if a project is delayed by six months, you will be incurring overhead cost and the idling of missionaries and other uh, uh ancillary costs so which is which will add on to the project so it's a dynamic environment in a dynamic environment you need something like visual uh visual guidance to make decision so the point is very clear with the help of 4d and 5d environment we can actually do this kind of cost control and de-risking the financials so and stay profitable at the same time can co can aim for higher growth in the organization from the organization you can see the example here quarterly sales target on expenses and profit and earnings some projects might lose so overall the net has to be like positive cash flow it will be like a good uh, step higher for the company as well coming to the machinery resources where 4d visualization you are seeing in the window let me pause at this uh, at this stage when the focus time is on this red ball which is detailed crawler crane the crawler crane is actually moving across the uh, project area suppose in case if the project is delayed by certain de days or duration this whole 
requirement of crawler crane is pushed aside for say month so it what, what you can do is by seeing this kind of visual description on histogram you could plan effective mobilization of machineries which will reduce idling cost emissions and it will be uh, efficient construction process to everyone involved in the project life cycle similarly you have multiple works going on at one site you have histogram so you can plan and de-risk collision uh, of works so this is one of the advanced methodology we use to mitigate uh, I mean, mitigate resource constraints on project site you can have when the focus time was at blue we can see the excavator requirement so what is the net available units what is the usage units per time and resource count what is the requirement when focus time and machinery machine on site so this principle can be applied to all uh, major works at the same time you can activate the uh, earned value graph here and you can lively monitor what is going on on site until here we have uh, gone through the delay on earned value analysis effective resource utilization now forecasting the requirements of quantities uh, in 2D schedule, I will just be putting the um, schedule and quantities, but whereas you want to calculate the requirement of quantities, you cannot do in 2D schedule. Whereas in 4D schedule, when the model is uh, already prepared and model is already existing in the program, instantly you can generate quantities. Like for say, I need to order quantities for the next week. If I'm doing only one pile, I'll just select it and I'll measure the volume of concrete required. Takeoff is instantly. So if I'm doing set of piles, I'll select those piles, plan for the next week or some somewhere in the near future, then I'll see the required quantity. Then I have a separate Excel of required quantity for weekly basis. And we don't need uh, too, too many hands to do this. It's just a one tool which can enable take off any kind of quantities, architectural, a structural, m &E, any any kind of quantities you could take off and place procurement and forecast the requirement. You can also cross verify whether the placed quantity is accurate, uh, accurately consumed or not, whether there is any wastage, you can record the wastage and you can do the a comparative analysis and you can mitigate the wastage of materials on site as well this is the this is certainly an added advantage in uh, project controls so the tool uh, tool brings all the functions under one roof and under one platform whereas on value analysis delay analysis forecasting site safety risk assessment planning of materials uh, constraint mitigation can, we can do all these functions in one tool. Net zero practices. Now in current uh, climate change condition, it's very difficult to do works on site. Suppose I'll take uh, Singapore, uh, for example, for the past two weeks, it is continuously raining. In some other country, in some other city, there is a dense pollution and there's a flooding. So the moving forward, it's like certain component of manufacturing uh, is incorporated in the construction. So it is not like enter uh, project is done on site. So it's a DFMA designed for uh, manufacturing and assembly of components. So where we source, this is going to happen. Now the even COP meeting, uh, the emphasis is to reduce the usage of uh, fossil fuel. So. We are moving towards 100% uh, renewable used uh, metal components where, where it is say RE100, 100% renewable energy sourced factories producing materials. So such as steel, green cement, green bricks on glass, all these components are made 100% renewable. So for before this development, we'll have to do the 4D process like uh, how to design and how to install installation sequence methodology 
uh, in the 4D program where we can identify the site constraints, site risk, and installation sequences and space for storage of the delivered materials. Then we'll uh, pass the design and design, uh, procurement schedules and fabrication schedules, delivery schedules to the factories. So they fabricate using the renewable energy source materials and based on the delivery schedule, the deliverables will be deliverables will be arranged based on the deliverable and installation schedule sequence. On-site installation will be carried out uh, based on the uh, 4D uh, program project controls. So it is like uh, the process entirely, I don't say entirely, at least 70% of uh, construction process can be uh, done using 4D or 5D beam process. Because uh, this, this material procurement, material production is a different aspect, but when the life installation and fabrication delivery is uh, has to be linked with the schedule, uh, and for the 4D beam comes into the picture in reducing and meeting your net zero goals. It's very clear. The life cycle is very clear. So when we streamline using the 4D program, we are actually uh, um, uh, meeting the net zero goals. So it's very difficult to meet net zero goals in construction industry. Say even we do all this process with all the renewable energy, but the installation is due to fossil fuel and delivery of uh, material is due to the uh, uh, traditional truck methodology. So at least 90, 90% we can go for uh, net zero process. Henceforth, uh, in the coming future, due to the implication of climate change, extreme heat condition, extreme uh, flooding condition or non-workable conditions, uh, this kind of modular fabrication and installation. I'm just uh, presenting the building, but when it comes to the say bridges, the bridge models can be uh, scheduled and uh, manufactured and mobilized and installed in this in the same process flow. So entire uh, infrastructure process can be done in this manner. Uh, or for example, if there is an offset fabrication, suppose we are not having a manufacturing unit, but we have a space. So we can do on casting yard with these resources, then we can do the installation process following the same methodology. Again, overall summary, definitely the visual aided decision making it's um, a way future for us to meet our project goals, to stay profitable, to mitigate unforeseen uh, risks in all kinds of environments. And visual delay analysis, uh, it is catching up very faster soon. I mean, uh, uh, if you follow the normal traditional delay analysis methodology, you will have, it will take a lot of time and uh, bringing everyone to acceptance, it's a difficult task. But with visual delay, you have seen several cases I presented where metal supply delay and uh, equipment supply delay, so all can be modeled and uh, the analysis can be presented to the team uh, to make a decision. Missionary resource planning is quite effective and useful. We can optimize the requirement of missionary on site. Uh, in traditional planning, what is happening is we are like overly aggressive in stating the required missionaries, but on site, there is no space to mobilize such a missionaries on site. So uh, this is an erroneous decision making, which is uh, incurring a lot of cost to the projects. So this can be avoided, mitigated with the effective resource planning visually. Ease of communication among stakeholders, like we have consultant, delay analyst, and project management team. So we can communicate uh, very effectively among the stakeholders without any hesitation, because we are presenting everything visually. Progress update is visually shown monitoring recovery program all this is uh, visually represented and procurement schedule can be passed on to the fabrication team or manufacturing companies so they are very well uh, uh, very well known what is to be delivered so this kind of process is an improvement it has to be taken place or else we continue to incur a lot of cost on projects and as mentioned it will improve the delivery of project timelines and we can uh, plug wastages of resources, either is a concrete volume or steel or idling of machinery. It all sums up to 
certain level of carbon emissions. So we can mitigate and reduce the wastage of resources. And overall, we can improve the delivery of project controls with this uh, 40 program. And I, I'm really embracing this technology to meet all the project goals. And net zero goals, we still haven't tried, but I foresee this is going to be coming soon. And additionally, if you think uh, in the era of uh, AI, with all these things, all this data is available in a platform, you can imagine if you click a button and you give a comment to a tool that you need to generate quantities for the certain zoning areas to generate quantities of piling, required pile quantity for the area A, it will instantly generate and give the quantities. Similarly, what is the delay due to delayed mobilization of certain resources, it will generate the delay duration. So this kind of generative AI tool can be uh, expected in this kind of uh, softwares in the near future. So what I urge is we have to embrace this kind of technology. We have to master this kind of technology to meet the future changes and improvements in the technology. So moving forward, we'll uh, go towards the Q&A and uh, a panel discussion. As highlighted, um, Mr. Mysera from Lendlist has joined us and along with the Bentley team. I'll be taking to the. Thank you, Sandeep. thank you so much for your thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, right now, I'll just invite our panelists here, uh, Mysara, Anik, Dargata, you know, to just come on board here. You know, to you know really share and discuss several topics that are of interest, that are popular you know, in this 4D beam wall, you know, and hopefully if you have any questions, if you can see there's a chat box at the, uh, on the go to webinar tab at the bottom there, you can see there's a chat box. So if you have any questions for Sandeep, for the panel, feel free to drop us, uh, you know, drop us a message on the chat box and then we would do our best to actually assist you or try our best to answer to your questions and queries that you may have. It can be anything related to the webinar or something about Synchro that you might have thought of, you know, or something like that, you know, feel free to let us know so that I can, you know, so we can discuss together with the panel and hopefully we'll be able to help answer your questions. Uh, thanks, Sandeep. That was really some great content. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, very much insightful. And I believe, you know, the best part is, uh, you know, presentations like this, uh, in, insight from industry like these help people to dispel this kind of myth that many people still have that 4D is just for the sake of generating an, an animation output. Mm -hmm. I mean, from your experience, uh, you mean some of the anecdotes that you shared, you know, 4D should be used as a proper planning tool. And I guess the this entire webinar, whatever you presented, uh, is an answer of what are the advantages of using a 4D reliant planning mechanism. Uh, just, uh, I mean, uh, maybe you, uh, you uh, to haven't like uh, mentioned a lot about uh, what projects maybe can you just mention one sector maybe one uh, you know you mentioned initially that 4d can be used across multiple sectors be it a transportation project or uh, maybe a, a metro station these kind of projects so if you have uh, encountered any particular sector where uh, you know 4d can be uh, has been used and you have got benefit the client has got benefited from the process uh, maybe you can just share an experience on this yeah especially the urban infrastructure where uh, whole urban setup is like congested environment with the movement of traffic and the restricted uh, truck movements for delivery of materials uh, this 4D planning tool will give the window period for each activities like delivery from midnight so and so time and construction noise to be reduced between so and so time. So these kind of uh, restrictions are high in the urban sector, urban construction projects. At the same time, resource availability is also low because of the urban construction environment. So we suppose a mixed development projects urban infrastructure projects uh, like uh, transportation projects you can uh, bus depot you can actually use 4d very effectively uh, uh, for example in bus depot a uh, lot of uh, transport movement will be there but you are improving the bus depot so in that scenario which to be closed which to be used for public 
and site uh, safety aspects like uh, can be mitigated monitored uh, in this kind of complex urban projects which is like um, very effective way of managing projects nobody can predict what kind of risk you are forcing i believe the same approach is applicable for you know uh, where you're upgrading existing functional airports you know you yes. you have to call in off one particular part of uh, the airport which has to be function uh, which has to remain functional while the upgradation and renovation and whatever is going on in the other half yeah so i mean conveying that information using just a 2d uh, you know planning sheet or gantt charts probably is uh, difficult over there you know the visuals add a much more uh, you know accessible layer of information that can be communicated among all the stakeholders uh, yeah even uh, if you are in trying with the 2d schedule you will not uh, inculcate all the risks into the program because you right. are not seeing the risk in visual you are seeing the risk and you are seeing the time wise risk coming forth so you can uh, incorporate for the existing risk and future risk so that is a place where uh, it people contribute a lot true and this is probably where you know digital rehearsal comes a very plays a very important role right i would like to hear uh, from myself also like any examples or anything you would like to share from your region uh, you have been also involved in this um, particular area for a long time so anything you would like to share in terms of benefit of 4d in in a project from a real life examples i think you're on mute uh, mashara thank you for reminding me <laughs> anik uh, thank you sami for the presentation it was a great one it was a very good presentation and freely explained the bar and the extension of the use of uh, 4d in construction in different areas for your question anik uh, from my experience i found the 4D very helpful and important when you got like a project with different phases with overlapping activities. So traditionally, when you are using the 2D or 3D uh, only, like you'll have, you won't be able to to see this overlapping between the phases and the activities. Um, the only on the gun chart, and no one really understand how it's worked in terms of overlapping right. between all of them. When we start using the 4D and start to explain this overlapping between phases, between activities, between stages, in a very complex infrastructure project, you start to get the people understanding quickly. You start to get the people engaged more and get their feedback. And the most important part of that, getting the feedback from the experienced people when they start to understand the plan on your project. So start to get the feedback from health and safety team. They never understand the program before. So they start to say, oh, now we can see it. So we'll give you our feedback directly and that improve our program and reduce the number of delays a lot when we start using the 4D in early stage of the project. Uh, so I'd say in, in, in a complex infrastructure project, it's really, really helpful and supportive. Uh, to be able to see the different phases and stages of the project. Also, also it could lead to a different cost scenario where the cost will multiply. Like, say, a project is been has been awarded for 1.5 billion. If you don't foresee and inculcate all the risk over a period of time, this project's value will increase to 2.5 billion. Suppose one year delay, so all the overhead cost will add on, and from there the cost required to complete the project and I have to factor in the inflation of materials and uh, machinery, idling charges, all this if you factor in. So you're uh, going to lose more money if you don't factor all the risk using visual uh, programming. Right. Yeah. Uh, not talking about this uh, net zero that is the you know, as if carbon neutrality is in 4D like um, like I would like to also hear from myself, like what ideas you have in mind. Sandeep has shared some uh, things like where it can be useful and how we can, you know, reach more towards this side. So, 
Yeah. <clears throat> so a uh, uh, raging mortal site, uh, like probably I didn't mention that before. Um, and we spoke about that earlier, like like how can we use the uh, reality capture to track the progress on site and incorporate that in our 4D plan to get more accurate progress and close to a real time progress on site. Again, mm -hmm. we, we 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 run this in one of the project to uh, uh, get the real capture from site and run uh, the the update from the real capture model um, in comparison with the uh, uh, land model in the 4D environment. And that that the, the result was 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 amazing. It was very good. It was really uh, uh, beneficial to the project. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting. The, that, that, that this dynamic progress and dynamic comparison between the planned progress as it's represented in the 4D baseline and the actual progress from the uh, reality mm -hmm. capture. Uh, that was close to real time data. Identify all the discrepancies and delay even before it's happened, like expect the delay mm -hmm. when it should be avoided or when it could be avoided. Um, mm -hmm. And it enable us to have more efficient resources allocation and to mitigate the risk again as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So uh, talking about this progress tracking, uh, digitalized progress tracking, we um, do have the you know integrated solution that's called Synchro Control and Synchro Field. So basically, which host your project in cloud and you know it allows you to collect data from uh, the site using the mobile application called Synchro Field and you start assimilating the data in Synchro Cloud at one place. And I believe that brings a lot of advantage, you know, that, when you start accumulating use, data. Yeah. That was used at the time uh, in the project okay. to use a, a, mm -hmm. a, a model in real capture in comparison with the 4D1 in the Synchro Control mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. control. Yeah, yeah. And along with that, there is some questions that came up in the dashboard is that uh, can we able to make dashboard using Synchro? Yeah. So, um, yeah, Sandeep, would you like to answer that part? Uh, yes, part. we can make a dashboard. And while you mentioned synchro control, synchro control has a level of four details like RFI moment and field reporting, mm -hmm. synchro right. fields and synchro field. So all this data can be exported to P6 from their Excel or directly to the Excel and we can have customized dashboard. It's uh, functional mm -hmm. and much more functional than the existing planning tools. So you can obviously have yeah. the dashboard. And also snapshot uh, view, monthly snapshot mm -hmm. view, weekly snapshot view of planned and actual progress in the dashboard. Mm -hmm. So if you just present the chart and bars and graph the, about the progress, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to convey to the room full of uh, professionals. So it's very better. I mean, it's a very good way to present with visual images of progress. Yeah. And, you know, um, to add further now, the Synchro API is available. So, you know, you can use the Synchro file as a data source and, you know, request uh, the, the information that you want to have uh, through the APIs and build your own dashboard. There is even, uh, you know, connector with the Power BI and the Synchro file as a data source. So you can even publish that um, dashboard that you have used, you know, created in the Power BI and publish it inside uh, the Synchro control itself. So yeah, I there's lots the, of flexibility. I believe the connector is pretty much powerful in terms of capturing all the information. So uh, like you can use the connector to capture the information and then like work on your way using that information, that pool of information and generate, you know, mm -hmm. uh, dashboards as you wish within, uh, within Power BI and control gives you the advantage of hosting the dashboard within Synchro control project itself so that you don't have to look elsewhere and your Synchro control project becomes a single source of truth for the entire construction phase of the project. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the other projects we use the uh, iTwin connector, and that's right. one of the other as well from using that or hosting the model in uh, Synchro Control. So I think it's 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 hosted in iTwin format. So the iTwin connector allowing you to 
export the actual model to any other dashboard. So like you can use that dashboard from Synchro Control directly, or if you're using Power BI or any other uh, tool for dashboarding, we use this iTwin connector to visualize the model in Power BI dashboard. Directly. And it was a very good and efficient. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So another question. Pratin, so it's yeah, asking right. Sandeep, uh, can we check manpower productivity in 4D visualization? Um, of course, you could check manpower productivity. If there is a user field and column, additional column, mm -hmm. where the quantity and required uh, manpower has been already placed, can check the productivity because mm -hmm. there is a customized calculation function in the columns also, right? We can check right. uh, productivity. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. And even you can. Uh, Pratin, you I can, hope that answers your question. Yep. Sorry, Anik, you can continue. Yeah. yeah. So even you can check uh, the you know productivity. So if the manpower resources are there and you know by default uh, it calculates the manpower from there. And if you have a productivity rate in you know already been there in Synchro, then the, you know this can use for you know what was your initial productivity rate and how it's performing now. And even if yeah. you start recording all this actual data, you can historically uh, review all of this data and you know have your own productivity rate for different resources for a particular type of projects. On the duration of uh, projects, uh, I mean, activities come from the productivity. Mm -hmm. So if the duration is prolonged, it will automatically convert into the right. actual productivity rate. Then from there, and mm -hmm. you can work backwards the resource consumed. Mm -hmm. In, in yeah. one of the slides, you can see the total units of machinery and actual units. In one of the slides, in the machinery histogram, you can see. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we can model uh, manpower also. Yeah, yeah. But we cannot visually showcase the manpower working. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I doubt whether that would actually add any value apart from showing some human figments so, in an animation. You, you, but... have to, you have to think about um, overall and uh, precise goal-based uh, expectation from the tool. It has exactly. everything, exactly. so don't think yeah. and ex expect only those goal-based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the role of AI? What is the... Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to think. What about generative AI? Like, like what, what do people imagine that how, you know, what we should do to get your things easier? How do we imagine in future these things should be done? Like, uh, using generative AI, you command something and things get created automatically. Like, what, what do you imagine uh, that how, how things will be in future? Yeah, um, you want to answer this one, Sandy, or? No, you have to answer it. You're working more on that. Uh, yeah, I think he presented about it, I think, a few years back in a conference. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. How do you think the future would be? Future, future-wise, uh, okay, uh, uh, let's first agree that 4B is one step ahead. So, when you're taking this step to transform your planning and your cost control to to utilize the 4D and 5D, it's like an enabler for the future technology. So what we we can't start talking about AI and uh, generative AI if we don't like taking the steps before to enable this technology to be happen. So when we talk about like reality capture, one of the pilots we have been running, and I was running this actually as well right now, how can we automate that capturing of the information at site? So we don't really need someone to go to measure the progress at site. You can get like a robot or machine to move at site and capture the progress and run a comparison directly and give you a prediction uh, uh, in real time uh, uh, without a human uh, interfere of that. So, mm -hmm. but won't be able to, to go ahead with this kind of technology without having the basics before that. For the 5D, it's enabler. So it's enabling you to have a kind of integration between your data frameworks across the, your 3D model, your cost information, your scheduling information, 
and with the site progress as well. So once you've got all of this integration, that alignment between all of them, that's what's enabling you to start. Oh, I got a lot of data now. They're all connected. I can start to use the generative ID, AI modules to mm -hmm. predict or to give me uh, uh, what will happen in a similar project, in a similar situation with almost the same model. So if you are talking about like, like, like we are going to, to use the same design uh, more and more or over and over. So what will happen if we just change one of the condition from this model, like the location? Okay, so how the project would be looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I would say like like the enabler of of any AI module is the rich data or the amount of data we mm -hmm. have. The amount of data we have by integrating the time cost with the three D information that's huge and enabling us to get a lot and a lot of outcome from this. Yeah, on in terms of data, I want to add like. If you have your project, like you said, that you're already using the iTwin platform. So when you have uh, the data, you know, integrated through iTwin, it allows you to, you know, square it data because the data becomes arranged in a more, um, you know, understandable or readable way so that anyone can start querying the required data uh, because the data becomes standardized when you have it in a model uh, you know that everyone uh, you know, knows how to query data from there, and that's what uh, I Twin is allowing you, bringing data from all source and keeping it in a uh, in a way that everyone can query with uh, their guidelines, their documents on how to do it. Now it's up to the different uh, you know enthusiasts out there on how they start using the data for uh, different purpose. So Sandeep, what do you imagine? Like, that's a great, uh, that's a great yeah. development. Uh, what uh, Maisra is saying, it's going to happen and it's already started happening because certain companies are already accumulating set of data. So if you are using the cloud-based platform, all the data is being automatically, uh, I mean, fed, fed into the AI with the permissions of mm -hmm. the user. So it is like uh, you have a bunch of data and for any similar projects you can use and you can use generative module and mm -hmm. query and use it. So it's going to happen. Uh, additionally, uh, you need not to relay to another, uh, I mean, experienced uh, conditions, even in the same project with the availability model, it can generate quantities, rebar requirement mm -hmm. and duration mm -hmm. and the machinery requirements. Uh, on this, it can uh, generate in the near future in the same tool, if there is an agenda. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, like we feed the model and we ask the you know computer to generate the most optimized schedule from all the previous history of the project that has been there, or even there's a scope of you know in, in, incorporating all the previous historical informations of all the project, and then AI starts generating something, and through query we start uh, you know querying like asking, hey, uh, in the computer, can you provide me this data or can you change this? Mm -hmm. The way we now interact with the other generative AIs out there, and even talking about and the progress. This, this is a question that we have faced already while talking. To <laughs> yeah, users, I mean. yeah. So it's there yeah. in someone's imagination. So maybe at a, at some point of time, this too can become a reality. Let's see how what future mm -hmm. holds for us. Yeah, yeah. And, and furthermore, you're talking about the progression report. Maybe uh, we can fly over drone and the computer itself analyzes the progression report based on the image they capture from the site, and rather than you know someone feeding the manual information. Yeah. Um, I think on this panel discussion, we are getting quite a few questions. Uh, I guess we are yeah. already a bit over time, I guess, but we can take these two questions uh, and we can conclude up there. Right, so uh, we have a question from uh, Fanuel. And Chirimuta is a, like, like, it has been asked that we have noticed that if food is not introduced at tender uh, slash bid stage, it will be difficult for the team to accept it at construction stage. Additional resources might be required at construction stage, uh, should have been incorporated at tender, uh, tender stage. It's important to get the timing right. 
So I guess it's more of a statement or uh, feedback. It's, that, a, uh, it's, a, it's a more of a compliance uh, statement. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if it is not in the tender stage, I mean, I'm going to put up a fact here in Singapore. Uh, they have all the requirements now for the baseline monthly updates and a revised program and uh, certain uh, important tasks to be simulated and presented in the 4D. So it's, yeah. it, it will catch up very faster than you think because if major uh, countries are doing it, then it will be like replicated throughout uh, the world. So it is uh, better to have uh, the tool and start practicing what is what I, that is what I suggest because even myself didn't expect that the government tenders will be with uh, this specification past two years back where I was still using Synchro for my own uh, purpose. What do you say, Mr. Mysore, what about the condition in Australia? So it became now like uh, a requirement in a lot of tender documents uh, in, 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 in the public sector project and some private sector. And the most important point here, like, like once that, that, that organization or the people start to realize the value out of that using 4D, that's when it starts to happen. Even if it's not part of the tender or if it's not required, the people will want to use it because actually it's giving them more visibility and confidence on how the project will be delivered in uh, the future. Uh, so in Australia, yes, uh, 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 in a lot of projects now it became like mandatory required during the tender, that's correct. Uh, but again, some private companies start to use the 4D even if it's not required in the tender because they start to realize the value and the outcome from the 4D. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess the last question is from uh, Mani Khan. Yeah, so what documentation feature does Synchro offer for recording and tracking EOT request and change management activities. Are there customizable reporting options to communicate uh, the impact of changes and EOT decision uh, to stakeholders? Okay, and yeah, I guess uh, that's with the follow-up question uh, from, yeah, so are there any tools within Synchro that enables seamless integration of change management process? So Sandeep, would you like to um, you know answer that part? I guess it has to do a lot with the synchro form management, which allows you. Yeah, it's a more of a communication as well as a program inclusion inclusion in the program. So what we can what you can present is you do the uh, model the change and uh, incorporate into the program and you generate the impact and you showcase this um, due to this change order this will be the time impacted and you take mm -hmm. a snapshot and in the letter you circulate to them uh, and this 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 is the starting point of the communication and you can keep mm -hmm. tracking uh, using the synchro forms with this kind of uh, arrangement yeah and forms are customizable yeah. and you can export it in reports or you can even uh, pull the data from forms to build your own dashboard in other different format and by customizable uh, even you can generate your own workflows in terms who you know where from the information or the forms you know move from one person to other person who has the right to approve or disapprove certain things and the whole things get historically saved in a particular form and I guess that's what uh, it brings a lot of an uh, you know you know advantage in change management and it is fully customizable and the workflow is fully customizable up to you so yeah i guess uh, we are running out of time we are already uh, yes, six, we minutes are ahead. Well, six yeah. minutes ahead yeah and, yeah. so, uh, I, think, I think there was a question about uh, the presentation i guess this uh, entire webinar is would be recorded and would be available yeah. for uh, later viewing so uh, yes. i guess once it's available uh, frankie or someone amongst us will be able to share the link to the recording uh, mm -hmm. that you can yes. uh, access in uh, linkedin we'll post it in our linkedin uh, profiles and from there you'll be able to visualize the presentation later on mm -hmm. also for yeah. your reference don't yeah. worry about it uh, this as uh, Tadakata shared is uh, this is recorded so you will be on demand access will be granted to you to the email that you registered this webinar uh, with so 
you are able to review the content and you know go through it again if you miss out anything or uh, yeah. whatever. So uh, sorry, we are may not be able to answer uh, more questions that have come in right now. You know, uh, we will take note of them. You know, and once uh, once again, uh, if you guys are actually interested uh, to take part and uh, with us and join us in more web webinars as fellow Synchro users to share your experience and you know as how Sandeep and Maisara has done with us today, feel free to contact me. You know, drop me an email and you know we'll be look forward to hearing from more of our users. You know, to understand what they have been doing, what have they been using Synchro to do, and what have they accomplished so far in their you know in their in their four D journey. You know and we look forward to hearing from you guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop us a mail. And without further, uh, without uh, just delaying too much, you know, just thank you very much for attending our webinar today. And you know, I hope you guys have a good uh, rest of the day ahead with you. And uh, we we'll see you, we we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks everyone. Well, thank you.